This is News 8 Now in High Definition. Caught on tape and now in the hands of investigators trying to take a dog fighting ring down. An alert tonight for homeowners about a part that's led to a deadly house explosion. And our special tribute as we say so long to longtime Channel 8 chief weather forecaster Troy Dungan. This is News 8 at 6 in HD. Dallas police are sending out a warning to parents tonight. The urgent alert comes after an attempted kidnapping. No cliff. This is in the 2700 block of South Vernon Avenue. Channel 8's Gary Reeves talked with parents of the victim. He's live with what he just found out. Gary? Yeah, we're live here at police headquarters where the appeal for help comes not just from the cops, but from a very frightened family. We spoke here with a young mother who was just out for a Sunday stroll with her two daughters, ages 3 and 11. They were just going four doors down the street to her mother-in-law's house when, the, she, when she just left the girls out on the porch while she went inside. In just a matter of moments, those girls were almost grabbed by a man police say was out looking for a young female victim. She went inside the, the house uh, screaming, and I didn't know what was going on. This when she uh, started yelling that someone was about, uh, someone tried to take her. For this Oak Cliff family, a walk four doors down their Oak Cliff Street has changed their lives forever. They asked we not show the face of their 11-year-old daughter, who was almost kidnapped. She cried through much of this news conference. But they want everyone to see this face. It's an artist sketch of the man who tried to grab her near the corner of Vernon and Illinois, near the Winwood Shopping Center. He's 5'9 to 5'11, white with salt and pepper hair and goatee, about 60 years old. Police say he's an ongoing threat, and this family won't rest until he's caught. This uh, man who attempted to abduct this child was out on the street searching for a child. This man is not going to stop searching for a child on this street or some other street. It's, it's been very hard for her. Uh, I've seen a, a difference on, on her, a change, but I feel more for me. I, uh, I just can't sleep. All I think of is what could have happened. Now, police are looking for a very distinctive looking man and also driving a very distinctive looking truck. We're talking an older, late 80s, uh, late 80s early 90s black Ford Bronco. Uh, they say it's got a lot of paint chips on it, paint chipped off the hood, paint chipped off the passenger side door, and uh, paint where you can see the primer underneath. So police are looking for this man, hoping that they can find him and get him off the streets before he can find another victim, one that perhaps wouldn't be quite so lucky. Reporting live in Dallas, Gary Reeves, Channel 8 News. A deadly natural gas explosion in Wiley last October has spawned a major safety initiative by the Texas Railroad Commission. The state's natural gas regulatory agency has requested all gas companies survey their use of a particular pipe fitting that malfunctioned and is blamed for the Wiley deaths last fall. News 8's Brett Ship joins us now with this exclusive report. Brett? Gloria, the directive was issued three months ago following the state's investigation into the October house explosion that killed Benny and Martha Cryer. The Concern that the same gas pipe and fitting that failed then is still in the ground all over the state and may be another accident waiting to happen. A state railroad commission investigation released last March found that a faulty natural gas coupling under the alley caused the explosion that leveled this house, killing Benny and Martha Cryer asleep inside. The pipe and fitting is called a compression riser and its safety and integrity is being questioned. In the hours that followed the Wiley explosion, Atmos Energy scoured the neighborhood and found 21 defective riser pipes and couplings that needed to be replaced. Gas leaks were everywhere. In a letter dated April 25th, Railroad Commission Safety Director Mary McDaniel issued a safety inquiry letter to all gas service companies in Texas seeking information about any leaks or failures of compression risers and any information regarding the recommended discontinuance of these risers. Yeah, these are a problem area. Uh, it's been known for a long time. Pipeline expert Don Deaver of Houston says he has seen extensive problems with these particular pipes and fittings across the state. The last one he saw involved an explosion in West Dallas in 2001 in which four teens were horribly burned. And there was a failure of a service line at, uh, at one of the homes there where the uh, compression coupling pulled apart. Atmos officials say they have discussed the compression fitting safety issue with Railroad Commission officials and are complying with all requests. 
But Deaver says gas companies need to be more than compliant. He says they need to replace old compression risers and hopefully help prevent another tragedy. This was, this is a problem. This is not a remote uh, problem that happens very infrequently. It does happen quite a bit. Late today, the State Railroad Commission announced it is now updating its safety investigation to include all compression couplings, and that could mean hundreds of thousands of questionable fittings. The commission hopes to have a better handle on how big a problem this is by the end of the year. John and Gloria. All right, thanks a lot, Brett. New information tonight about another fatal house explosion, the one in Cleburne back in May. Second person has died from her injuries. 44-year-old Hazel Sanderson died Sunday night at Parkland Hospital. Her mother, Hazel Pollock, died days after the blast. Detectives say a gas leak, a lit match, and a broken seal caused two explosions inside the home. Three other people were hurt. The family filed suit against Atmos Energy last month. Investigators believe natural gas leaked from a sewer into the home before it exploded. Health authorities are searching for people who may have lived, worked, or gone to school near a West Dallas processing plant. They might have been exposed to asbestos. The Grace Texas Vermiculite plant processed a mineral used for making insulation. It was in operation from 1953 to 1992. Asbestos in the lungs can take decades to develop serious, even deadly disease. Parkland Hospital has been given a grant to screen people for free. So if you're concerned, show up at Parkland Hospital Saturday from 8 to 4 or Sunday from 1 p.m. to 4 for a free x-ray. Fort Worth police are investigating the case of burned Israeli flags. It happened at the Cornerstone Baptist Church sometime late Monday or early Tuesday. The pastor says the flags were flying at half-staff Monday for Lady Bird Johnson when someone stood on a trash can to burn the Star of David on the flag. Police say this isn't a hate crime because the flag is not a religious symbol. Grapevine police say they've arrested a man who exposed himself at Grapevine Mills Mall. Witnesses say Brandon Mason wasn't wearing shoes when he entered the mall and went to a kiosk to buy sunglasses. While he was paying for his sunglasses, his shorts fell down, exposing, well, everything. The witness says Mason dropped his shorts five other times at the mall. Ups and downs for locally based airlines. They released their second quarter earnings today. Southwest blames rising fuel costs for a 17% drop in profits to $278 million. That's actually better than expected. The report comes a day after Southwest offered a voluntary buyout to more than a quarter of its workers. American Airlines parent AMR Corporation says its profits rose nearly 9% in the second quarter, $317 million. It filled more seats with passengers paying higher fares, but that's still short of analysts' expectations. Listen to this idea. Going to school five days a week could be a thing of the past in Lancaster. The district there is considering changing to four-day school weeks for students. The Lancaster ISD board wants to hear from parents and urges them to attend a public meeting tomorrow night at Lancaster High School. Uh, sounds like water bills in, are going to be going up in Arlington after the council meets next week, but it won't be based on what customers use. It'll be determined by how much they put back into storm sewers. The bigger the runoff, the higher the price. Channel H's Brad Hawkins is in Arlington, live with the story for us. Brad? John, ironically, now that all the rain stopped, they can get to work fixing the problem again. Arlington needs a $100 million makeover of the storm sewer system. They have the cheapest rates in the country now. But next week, the city council likely will look to schools, big businesses, and houses of God to put some more in the collection plate. When it comes down in sheets, Arlington gets swamped fast. All their water runs into these people's yards, and these people's yards run into the culvert. Karen Alvarado's garage and more than 100 homes flooded here in all that rain last month, partly because there's so much pavement. Pavement that could soon add a cost to Arlington water bills. Properties that are bigger, 1,500 acres, of course, will contribute more because they have more runoff that's running into our streams. So. Arlington City Manager Jim Holgerson says the proposal will shift a burden from people with yards, like Karen Alvarado, to businesses and schools with big parking lots and foundations. Homeowners would see stormwater fees go up from $1.30 a month to $4.25. But commercial property owners who now pay a maximum of $390 a month would get charged $425 for every 2,800 square feet, tripling, even quadrupling some water bills with essentially a fee for sidewalks, patios, driveways, foundations, and parking lots, anything that doesn't soak up water. Oh, I'm not even sure it's disproportionate if, you, if you're talking about a square footage basis. 
David George, senior pastor at Lake Arlington Baptist, says it's a high price for the cornerstones of the community. We all want to pay our fair share. We're part of it as well. Um, I, I think there could be some consideration for what we give back to the community. Pastor George and more than 30 other pastors came together to meet with the city today to ask for some consideration. The school district here not happy either, John and Gloria. They say their water bill could go up an estimated $300,000 a year. Everyone agrees the problem has to be fixed. Who pays for it is up to the council next week. Reporting live in Arlington where we heard many well wishes for our friend Troy today. Brad Hawkins, Channel 8 News. I bet you did. Well, it is an illegal but popular sport. I hear what detectives Sorry. discovered going on here in Texas and who they say was involved. And if you live in Fort Worth, be careful where you light up. How the city council might follow in the footsteps of other smoke-free cities. Troy? we got so many weather people here. I hope we can agree on one forecast. <laughs> we'll see. Stay tuned. News 8 Now in High Definition with Gloria Campos, John McKay, Troy Duncan, and Dale Henson. Three, two, one. Big bust in the Houston area. Two people arrested so far, including a teenager. It's all in connection with an organized dog fighting ring. Our Houston sister station, KHOU, obtained this video from Harris County Detectives. Now, you know dog fighting is illegal in Texas. National Humane Society says hundreds of dog fights are stopped each year nationwide. As many as 20,000 people may be involved. A local workers recovering tonight after an on-the-job accident covered him in concrete. This happened this morning while the crew poured concrete at a site in Capel. Now, the ground, we're told, was too soft. Part of the cement pumper fell on the worker, covering him chest deep in cement. It's finally pulled out and taken to the hospital with some serious back and leg injuries. Fort Worth could soon have a tough new smoking ordinance. Last night, the city council received three proposals for stricter regulations, which could ban smoking in all restaurants and most public places. It's similar to smoking ordinances already in place in Arlington and Dallas. Fort Worth City Council will likely vote next month. All right, just ahead, Troy Dungan's final forecast before he retires. And our special tribute as we say so long, but not goodbye. Live captioning of News 8, sponsored by Don Davis Auto Group. Offering memory improvement courses for those who've forgotten the thrill of owning a new car. Classes are held daily.